four year old people who uh, you know die in their in their homes of uh, natural causes. What? What thirty five year old you know thirty four year old dies of natural causes? Maybe they let a black eyed kid in their house. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they were scared to death. I, I mean, seriously, I wasn't joking on that. I mean, you know, again. Oh, I know you weren't. Neither was I. Yeah, I, I you it's know, terrifying. A friend of mine that passed on, you know, a little over a year ago, Art Bell. He's the one that got me back. I was retired. He's the one that got me back into radio. You know, he we would we would talk quite often. Well, a couple times a month, and we talk about some of his guests, some of the stories, and stuff like that. One of them, the black eyed children, really intrigued him because I do think there's some type of basis behind it. I don't know if it's demons or whatever they are, but you know. It seems like they they want to be asked to come into your car. They want to ask to come in your house. And, you know, who knows if you're dumb enough to let one in that has black eyes, then maybe you're the ones that, you know, the neighbors or your relatives wondered why you weren't answering your phone and they come to your house and you're 35 years old laying dead on your couch. Right. I know that very well could be. I I had, uh, you know, I, I, I'd interviewed uh, Brian Bethel. He's the guy uh, who first really brought the Black Eyed Kid story to uh, to the public's attention. This was like ninety eight or ninety nine, and he he posted on a you know on a message board uh, his story, and then you know it kind of took fire after that, and and lots of people were talking and reporting those, and I had collected so much information, and I I you know interviewed. Uh, a lot of people about, you know, what could these black eyed kids be, you know, I, you know, from religious experts to, you know, to talking with, with scientists, doctors, biologists about what could cause an eye to turn totally black. And, you know, I, I, I did all that research and I'm like, I could do a book. And I started, you know, making an outline and I was talking to my wife about it. And she said, no way in hell are you going to do that? She said, I, I'm okay with everything you write about, but those scare the heck out of me. So if one ends up at our door and, you know, I'm going to be really, uh, you'll have no idea how upset I'll be with you. So I kind of dropped it. Well, maybe she gave you good advice, but I, I'm going to say there. Is, I think she gave me great advice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there is people out there. I had a guest on my show at that he claims he was a vampire and all the research I did on the individual, he hasn't been out of his apartment for years and he hasn't ate solid food for years. He has a group of friends that come over to his house and feed him. What's he eat? He bleeds him. He drinks their blood and he claims he's a vampire and maybe in his mind he is, but maybe he's turned into a monster that we don't understand because now he says he can't exist on human food. He tried eating human food at one point a couple of years ago. He got so sick. Uh, he can't go outside because so he's so anemic that the sun hurts him. I, and does, is that a monster? I think it is. I think he's turned uh, himself into some sort of a monster. Well, I mean, it, it, it could, yeah, it could happen. I mean, if you are so convinced that you are, you could to yourself become that. And if you do that sort of thing to your body, can, can somebody survive drinking human blood? I, I don't, I don't know. I, uh, but if you've done that, I mean, you probably changed something, uh, with, with your body to where, to where maybe you are a monster. I'm not saying, He's a stereotypical vampire from, from, you know, a Bela Lugosi movie, but, you know, he's at least to himself something, uh, you know, other than human. Oh, yeah. That, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that This makes me wonder, do vampires really exist? Because you go back how many centuries, and there's always been talk about vampires. Now have it, well, and it's not just not just the the ones that we think about. You know, the the uh, European vampires that that uh, have the Hollywood twist to them. There are vampire stories all across the world. All every culture has got a story of of some kind of vampire. The one I wrote about in uh, in, in my in my book is the Boo Hag from South Carolina, or basically the whole 
uh, lower east east coast of, of the United States who will come into a house. If you leave a, a spot big enough for a mouse to get into your house, this thing can get in. It's, it appears as an old lady who's had her skin ripped off. <laughs> and she will sit on your chest and suck your energy. And if she does it three times, uh, you're going to be dead. And she will take your skin and wear it. Um, so she'll have some skin, but it's not a blood drinking vampire. It's an energy vampire. And I'm pretty convinced those things exist because I've run into lots of people who, as soon as they appear, you know, as soon as they come into a room, it's like all the energy got sucked out of the room and, you know, I'll feel exhausted. Yeah, I I thought it was like people I couldn't stand, but, you know, it, it is true. I mean, there's been a lot of reports of, you know, vampires that suck energy and people say that they get weak feeling they get tired uh it's just weird i mean i i I, it's again there's so many creatures out there that i i think exist that are you know our science and and our our society just doesn't want to acknowledge they exist yeah, ab- ab- absolutely, absolutely. Do do I think that there are people who could turn into wolves? No, I, I honestly don't. But are there people who can feed off the energy of others? Yeah, yeah, I, that is a real thing. How about shapeshifters? Do you believe that they can exist and do exist? Uh, I think uh, I think I don't want to comment. No, I think it's. <laughs> I mean, with with a lot of these things we talk about, it it's one of those things that I could see happening. But am I seeing it through 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 the viewpoint of a Lon Chaney Jr. movie? Um, I maybe I did. Skinwalker stories bother me because they seem truly wicked. Um, Why don't you explain to the listeners what a skinwalker is? Uh, a skinwalker. This is a. a, a Southwestern part of the United States, the uh, the uh, the Native Americans from that area have um, have 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 a belief of of skinwalkers, and it's a uh, a magic user who can don the uh, don the pelt of an animal, or you know not not necessarily a pelt; it could be could be feathers, and be able to, to transform into that animal. You know, be it a coyote or, or a wolf or an eagle or, or something of that. And and they tend to be evil evil people who 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 can do that, and uh, and 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 they you know they, they can terrorize, torture, and kill people. So I mean they 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 seem yeah they they give me the willies, frankly. Yeah, and you know there's been reports of them going back you know to uh, the natives, American natives, for centuries on those. That's the scary part. Right, because you know, if they weren't real, why would the stories have persisted that long? Yeah, yeah, I'm all about that. I had, I had uh, recently read a story of someone um, in England who was convinced he ran into a, a skinwalker, and you know, the first thing in my head was, "Come on, you're in England." And then I'm like, "Well, you know what? These people can get aboard a plane." <laughs> you know, the skinwalkers. They can, you know, they look like they're, they're people. They can get on a plane. They can go wherever they want to. Somebody on iHeart just asked me, our iHeart app, asked me, do I still put the blanket over my head if I hear scary noises at night? Yeah, I do. How many other out there of you guys, if if you hear something really scary, just a natural, you know, from being a little kid all the way up, you, you put the blanket over, like it's going to protect you. No, it's not going to protect you. I just think it's a reflex. So there's your answer to that uh, person. Yeah, but well, let me give let me give some uh, some advice to that person. Get a cat, because any time you hear a weird noise in the house, your mind can blame it on the cat, and you can go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, that'd be a good one, or a bird, one of the two. I mean, hey, gee, what is that? Yeah, that's one thing I always, you know, again, I live on two acres of cedar trees. I'm the only one around here that has like a mini forest. But I tell you what, you hear some strange noises come, you know, uh, late at night, especially in spring and summertime. You know, there's all houses around here now, but I still hear coyotes, and I'm just wondering where are they at? 
Coyotes live everywhere. There's a population of coyotes that live in downtown Chicago. See, I didn't even know that. Yeah. There yeah, there there are stories every once in a while of them getting inside of uh getting inside of somebody's business. Which <laughs> really I'm in downtown Chicago and there's a coyote in the lobby. That's great. No, they're not friendly either. No, no, they're they're not friendly at all. And and well, I mean, all sorts of uh all sorts of animals come into uh come into cities. They're uh, it was a story I read, uh, you know, a year or two ago about a bear coming into uh, uh, a town in uh, in Colorado, and the people who lived at the house that the bear attacked the car uh, owned a uh, uh, a pastry business, and they had delivered a whole bunch of donuts the night before, and the car smelled like donuts, and the bear ripped through the car to get to the back seat because it smelled like donuts. And that leads me back to Bigfoot because there are lots of reports of Bigfoot inside city limits, dumpster diving. Yeah, I've had those and, reports. You know that? Right. Or, yeah, and not even near cities, like little area communities, like small little towns. You know, uh, I had a report here just recently of uh, a place that uh, is not too far from Mount Rainier that Bigfoot has been sighted uh, out of this. Basically, it's a little restaurant bar. Uh, been sighted going through the dumpster. Right. I mean, that's so it doesn't being in a city doesn't make you immune to running into something strange. I mean, you know, stranger than, you know, the people walking through the city, <laughs> but right. And, and, you know, I mentioned Chicago with, with all the Mothman sightings in the last couple of years. And we've got reports of a Bigfoot dumpster diving and, um, I mean, in in, uh, Detroit, there's the uh, Nain Rouge, which is uh, a little red dwarf that has appeared since uh, the French controlled the area. That uh, the the local natives, uh, you know, considered a sign of good fortune, but uh, the French considered a demon. And it has been reported appearing over the years in Detroit and it signals, it usually appears a few days to a week ahead of, you know, some disaster, whether it be riots or, uh, you know, a blizzard or something like that. And it, it was seen up until the 70s. Oh, yeah. Hey, our time is up. Yeah, you want to tell people again about your book, where they can find it? And if you have a website, Facebook, all that stuff, hey, go ahead and plug it. All right. Yeah, my uh, my book is Chasing American Monsters. Uh, uh, I've covered monsters in all uh, all 50 states uh, so and it's they're written in small snippets so you can put it on the back of the toilet if you are so inclined <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my website is jason offit j-a-s-o-n-o-f-f-u-t-t dot com uh, my books are available there uh, I've got a blog uh, all my contact information I'm on Facebook Twitter and Instagram so uh, if you have anything you want to ask me or want to friend me, just please go ahead. Oh, yeah. Hey, it has been so good having you on the show. I mean, people were looking forward for the last two weeks, you being on. You know, it, it gives people some thought now that, hey, there is things out there that do kind of creep around at night or even the day, depending on your location. Jason, I want to thank you for coming on Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. I really appreciate it. This has been a really good time. And, uh, uh, you know, I really hope my allergy medicine didn't come through in my talking. Oh, you did a good, <laughs> job. You did a good job. In fact, you know, if you want to come back on, like maybe in a June, we can continue on about more about monsters. People like I monsters. Will come, yeah, I'll come back on any time to talk about uh, creepy crawlies. I love it. Okay, sir. Well, you have a great week. And, uh, you know, uh, share us on your media, please. I will do. Thank you very much. Have oh, a good night. You too. Thank you. So, yeah, I, there's a lot of things like Mothman, Bigfoot, you know, all these creatures all over the world, all over the United States that exist. Or do they? I don't know. All I know, I can honestly tell you what I encountered was enough to keep me from going into any wooded forest for the rest of my life. And,